Now, just to forewarn you, what I'm about to share um, is, you know, it's quite brisk. Now, the meta crisis is a huge, capacious, depth, deep phenomenon. And if you want to take longer on it, I'd suggest a paper that was mentioned in the, in the advert for the event, which I wrote called Tasting the Pickle, 10 Flavors of Meta Crisis and the Appetite for a New Civilization. What I'm about to show you is for those who've already become aware of the meta crisis in outline, it will give them another way of thinking about it. And for those who have never heard of it, it will give them a way to start thinking about it. Okay, so with that in mind, I'm, I'm just saying that as a kind of preemptive apology that I have to go through this quite fast, throw quite a lot at you, but hope you can begin to see its relevance to the film. So I'm just gonna find that now on here. Am I sharing my screen, Peter, yet? You should have uh, access and you're not sharing it yet. One second, hang on, I'll just do that, excuse me. Uh, share a screen. Right, and we're going here, I think. Share. Yeah, here we go. Okay, and I'll play this. Right, so those of you who know John Verveke will know um, he has a model, a sort of cognitive science model of four ways of knowing, which are to know something propositionally, basically to know what it is, um, to know something procedurally, to know how to do it, to know something in a perspectival way, to know it from somewhere and to know something, almost the experience of it, to know what it's like to be inside it, to do it, a sort of participatory way of knowing. Those four ways of knowing, I think are quite a good way, both to kind of update your knowledge about the meta crisis, but also to see where the don't look up film fits in. I'm gonna go through them reasonably fast to get back to the film. So first of all, what is the meta crisis? Now there are lots of answers to this question, not just one, not just the one on this screen, but Perhaps the most crystalline, and those who know Daniel know he is rather crystalline, um, very clear articulation of what it is propositionally. It's a global problem which arises from under, an underlying set of generator functions. Um, so that when we, when we look at all of our different problems that are not just climate change, but also biodiversity loss, the problems of making sense of the world, democratic breakdown, cultural polarization, um, the, 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 the sort of fragility of the economy and so forth. Um, when you look at all those things, they're all sort of driven by three main underlying patterns. Um, and he calls them rivalist dynamics, which is runs into the problem of basically when one side does something, they get a significant advantage unless the other side does it too. So it's a sort of game theoretic understanding of the world getting worse because we're competing um, but we're competing in a way that's actually harmful because each side tries to get a competitive advantage by playing somewhat unfairly and the other side really to keep up has to do the same or worse. There's also the issue of subsuming the ecological substrate. That's basically saying that rather than allowing a regenerative e ecology whereby you use something and at least as much grows back or more, we're actually destroying the very sort of ecological capital, if you like, on which the health of the planet is based. We're eating into the the, the principle, as they call it in financial terms. Um, so we're, we're harming ourselves at the fundamental level of the eco ecology such that we can't regenerate. And then, oh, sorry, I've got a typo there, but exponential technology is the third. That image comes from Oliver Amorousen, who's no relation of my, mine, as far as I know, but he's got a bit of my name in his second name. Uh, it's, a, it's a bigger image and a very nice one you can find online. Um, now, this is a really good, uh, what is it way of answering the meta crisis, right? Um, but it doesn't give you that, doesn't give you everything. It doesn't tell you what it feels like. It doesn't tell you what to do about it. It doesn't really um, convey uh, a sort of in, inherent know-how with it. So I would say the meta crisis as proposition uh, is very important and that's a decent distillation of it. Problem, too much competition in the world of the wrong kind crazily consuming our ecological basis and technology that is creating new technology all the time in a dangerous kind of escalating way such that private actors can have have access to potentially very destructive technology so one example of that is to be able to hire a drone pay for a drone um, make your own biological weapon crazy person puts biological weapon and drone flies it into a city kaboom like simplistic but 
it's that kind of problem at a global scale. Um, and that's not before you mentioned artificial intelligence or synthetic biology or um, the, the, the way that the metaverse is going to play out with virtual reality and so forth. So that's what it is, the meta crisis. That's one way of looking at it. But how do you get it in perspective? Um, this is where I offer something. And this is in the pickle paper. Now, I don't expect you to read what's on the right hand side of the screen um, unless you've got particularly good eyes. But it's a way of trying to get at the plurality of the meta crisis, because, of course, meta is often used as an inclusive term to capture all the different features of the crisis. And that's often how it's used. It's like the meta crisis is the thing that lies behind all of the crises the world faces. But you've got to remember that although it's true that the many are one, the one is also many. And when you're thinking about that, remember that meta means many different things. You know, it doesn't just mean after, it can also mean within, uh, behind, beyond. Um, there's also a metaxi notion, which is like oscillating between. Um, why does that matter? It matters because the meta crisis here is about linking the COVID reckoning of what was that pandemic all about and how can we change the world on the basis of understanding what we've been through. The climate emergency says do something, act now, a different kind of thing, not a reckoning, but an emergency, time sensitivity writ large. And then the crisis is more about turning point, more about how do we deal with this crisis as a way of asking, now that the world's up for grabs, what do we do with it? That's about people's calling for transformation and regeneration and change the system, change the paradigm. But for all of that, the meta crisis comes in and says, how, you know, who's going to do it? Uh, with what sensibility and imagination, with what spirit, with what values? There was a wonderful moment, I think, in the conversation between Daniel Schmackenberger and, and uh, Tristan Harris with Joe Rogan about halfway through their three-hour conversation where Daniel and Tristan are doing a great job, as always, of laying out the conundrums of what's going wrong with the world. And then they begin to speak about what we might do about it in terms of major programs of education, uh, major patterns of cooperation, better technology that's owned maybe publicly. Um, Daniel's line here is that in a world of godlike technology, we all have to become bodhisattvas. So like he's talking about all this kind of thing. And Joe Rogan's line is, because he follows the game theoretic assumptions that Daniel's making, and it's all very coherent. But then he says, I get it, but I don't see it. I get it, but I don't see it. And it's a, it was a really powerful moment in the exchange because this is the problem of the world as we find it. It's not a game theoretical problem. It's a lived experience, life world, spreading butter on toast in a cold room while, while finding a problem that's going to destroy the world kind of problem. In other words, it's it, the movie speaks to that sense of this is not a puzzle to be deciphered. This is a reality to be lived. And because of that, you need to get the meta crisis in the broader perspective, which means several meanings of meta. And it also means linking it back to the beating heart of the emergency and the toxicity and political nature of the crisis. And unless you do that, it's not clear we're going to ever see it in, in Rogan's sense. A slightly more elegant, harmonious way of looking at this now, you can see the meta crisis procedurally in terms of what is it asking us to do? How do we do it to respond to the meta crisis? To come back to the question of, I think, Johannes earlier, um, we can only really deal with the meta crisis if we contend with these questions. Now, this was originally based on an idea of Zach's, which I, which I then tweaked a little bit, and then Mark Vernon added on imagination. So it's a kind of collaborative effort. But we think these five questions together get at what might be called the meta crisis when viewed broadly as an educational curriculum. In other words, what do we need to learn today? What kind of capability do we need, need to move into? How do we need to understand? How do, you, how do you make decisions on what basis of legitimacy can we do anything? Like where is the, where is the political legitimacy at the moment in, in dealing with issues like climate change or the pandemic? It's a thoroughly vexed space. And then imagination, you know, can we actually see a better world? Can we actually see where we're trying to get to clearly enough that we can begin to move there in any meaningful sense? So these five questions are all very difficult, right? They're really, really uh, conundrums. And um, someone said to me today that one of the ways of understanding what, a, um, what the meta crisis is, is it's lots of hyper objects in collision with each other. 
Now that's, that's a little bit too abstract, but if you think about these questions, they're really, really vexing questions. They're not straightforward and they co-arise. They come, they're in the same world. And the, the contention is that to deal with the meta crisis as a kind of, here's how you do it, procedural matter, it's one, you know, we take these questions and we live them out in any given complex scenario, what's going on and how do we know? Do we have what it takes to do what we need to do? Who gets to say what we should be doing and why? What ultimately matters and how do we live accordingly? And what does a viable future look and feel like? These are the living questions that define the procedure of dealing with the meta crisis. So that's one way of thinking about it. And then finally, how can we know it experientially? And this is where we come back to the film, because the reason I think the film is a kind of breakthrough and even a new genre, I mean, I, I didn't dwell on this too much at the beginning, but I think the conventional definition of satire is that it afflicts the comfortable and comforts the afflicted. That was Jonathan Swift's definition. And I don't think either of those things really apply today. I don't think anyone in power is particularly afflicted by this movie. Um, nor do I think people are particularly comforted by it. Um, so I don't really think it's satire. Is it a dark comedy? Well, yes, but what's really going on is it's a kind of documentary into a, set, into a kind of feeling that we all have that the world is really screwed up, right? This feeling that things are not making sense, they're not intelligible, that, le that legitimacy isn't clear, that we don't have what it takes, or so it would seem, although we can work on that that we can't really easily imagine a better world so much. Um, and that, we, that we're struggling to make sense of the ultimate meaning and purpose of life. And that these things are part of our lived experience. So what the film does is it helps us to participate in the meta crisis because it gives us that vicarious feeling as we always get when we watch a movie of, oh my God, this is what it's like to live with the meta crisis. And in this context, it's, all of the things you saw in the movie. It's the dysfunctional media, it's the distraction of social media, it's the broken families, it's the, the sense of people drifting and not really knowing what to do uh, with themselves, it's imbalances of power, it's massive inequality. It's all of these things together. And what the film does commendably is it gives you a felt sense for those things together. And that's for me the main value of the film. It's that it gives you the experience, a participatory knowing in what the meta crisis is about. Um, and that's why I've watched it more than once. That's why I wanted to talk about it here on behalf of Perspectiva and with the Stoa, because I feel like we need more films, more cultural artifacts to help us participate, to sort of know the meta crisis experientially, in my language, to taste the pickle. Because until we can do that, I think we're going to be some way from actually waking up in the way we have to. Um, it's not a simple waking up, right? I mean, you people say wake up as if, as if you would therefore know what to do. It's altogether worse than that. It's a first step, right? You've got to become aware that we're in this problem that's much deeper and fuller and wider than we'd care to admit. Um, and then what do we do? Well, the beginnings of the answer are by beginning to answer these kind of questions. But they're also about taking these things really seriously and getting our political leaders to act as if this is what mattered. So when they meet in the Glasgow COP or whatever to, to discuss climate change, they're not just discussing one issue as if the rest could be held constant and this was the variable. No, these are underlying drivers that have to be attended to. And then of course, we have to get it all in perspective. We have to sort of teach that this is what the world is today. But we start by millions of people having the experience of it by participating in it. So that's one way of looking at the meta crisis um, through the four ways of knowing that John Verveke introduced. It's only one, there are many, but that's the one that I felt that the film reminded me of. The value of the film was it helps us participate in the experience of the meta crisis. Thank you very much. Wow, that's awesome.